in both Flagstaff and Coconino on the road for the first round of the 4A state baseball tournament on Tuesday. Flagstaff losing, Coconino advancing to the second round. Creighton, give me a quick look at both of these games and a quick look at both of these teams' seasons. Yeah, like you said, both Flagstaff and Coconino were able to make the 4A state tournament this year, which was expected after the success that these teams had during the regular season. Coach Dobosch and his Flagstaff Eagles finished the season with an 18-10 record before ultimately getting bounced from the tournament in the first round by a very good Marcos Deniza team. Flagstaff was edged out by the Padres 8-3 in a game that saw a moment of silence before the first pitch to honor late teammate Evan Wisson, who tragically passed away just days before the game. This was Flagstaff's first playoff berth since 2014, as well as their first winning season. Flagstaff will be returning 15 players next season, including their two best pitchers in Drew Healy and Jimmy Ganan, who both led the team in strikeouts and many of the team's batting categories. As for the Coconino Panthers, they were able to move through to the second round of the state playoffs, taking down fifth-ranked Seton Catholic in an offensive battle between the two teams. The Panthers won the game 13-9 behind some timely hits from Colton Baxter and Jake Reed early in the game. However, it was ultimately a second-inning grand slam from Jake Plakis that propelled the Panthers to victory. Plakis finished the game 2-for-5 with six RBIs. Senior catcher Colton Baxter also had a day at the plate, going 3-for-3 three three with a walk, home run, and two RBIs as well. The Panthers will now move on to face the fourth-ranked Canyon Del Oro team down in Oro Valley, Arizona, so we wish them the best of luck in their journey to a state championship. Well, how about the grand slam from Jake Plekis? Really looking forward to that Canyon Del Oro game. Canyon Del Oro has had a great program for the last few years. Should be a fantastic game. Well, Creighton Lady Panthers fell on the road in the first round of the state softball tournament for 4A. What's next for these ladies? The Lady Panthers were unable to move on to the next round of the state tournament after falling to Pueblo Magnet 6-4 last Saturday in Tucson. This game saw lots of offense out of both dugouts, but the Panthers were unfortunately out hit at the end of the day. The Lady Panthers were able to strike first in the first inning with a run, but were unable to hold off a hard fifth inning charge by the Warriors, who plated four runs during that time. Sophomore Taylor Brown finished the day with two hits and two RBIs. Senior Madeline Klaus and Mary Tosi each recorded RBIs in their final games as Panthers as well. Despite the loss, this team will see plenty of returning players while only losing three seniors to graduation. Throughout the entire season, these underclass Lady Panthers have done nothing but produce and show potential for the future. This team will look to rely on sophomore Taylor Brown and freshman Brooklyn Wong, who each recorded hits on the biggest stage these ladies might have ever played on. I think if they can continue to grow as the offensive team that they know they can be, this team will have a legitimate shot at winning this tournament next year. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, Creighton. This team has a lot of talent, a lot of these players coming back next year. And I think they've got a great shot at making a deep playoff run next season. Now moving up to the collegiate ranks, NAU men's and women's tennis both competed in their Big Sky Conference tournaments this past weekend. Creighton, could either of these teams bring home the title? The NAU men's tennis team was unable to move on in the Big Sky tournament, dropping a heartbreaking match to Montana 4-3 this past weekend. The undefeated pairing of Tim Handel and Ruben Montano continued their dominance by winning their match 6-1, while the other doubles pair of Lucas Taylor and Thomas Fisher won their match 6-3. The men's team got off to a hot start, but were ultimately taken down in the final match by Montana's Yannick Schmidl. This team does have a lot to look forward to next season, seeing as this was the best season they've had in a while. This team now has a much higher standard heading into next season. As for the women's team, they made it to the big dance. This was their second straight year reaching the Big Sky Conference Championship. They were able to sweep Idaho State 4-0 in the semifinals. They won both their doubles matches 6-3 and 6-2, as well as both singles matches in straight sets. Kiara Tomasetti continued her dominance, being up 6-0 and 5-2 before the match was called due to the Lady Jacks' wins on the other courts. The Lady Jacks ultimately fell to the Idaho Vandals for the second straight year in the finals by a match score of 4-3. These ladies have played well these past few years, so I expect them to continue their dominance for many more years to come. Well, man, these teams have been fun to watch all year, and really the entire time I've been here at NAU, they've just been fantastic to watch. A lot of talent on both teams. I'm expecting both of them to be right back in the conference championship next year.